Father, somebody lift up the hands of the Lord. God precious Lord we humble ourselves before you Heavenly Father we say more of you and less of us without you we can't do anything Holy Spirit may you be the superintendent of this service take and control take total control speak through us and I decree and declare your people are equally anointed to receive the mysteries and the power of your word the Bible says you send forth your word and you will deliver them from that destruction Lord as your word cometh out this evening may it come out with electrified energy with the power to change your destinies with the power to bring healing may your word wash us up Jesus you said we are beautiful because of the word we have heard may your word beautify us may your word change us may your word catapult us into our next level in Jesus mighty name we pray if you are here this evening give the Lord a mighty mighty shout of praise if God has been good to you give him some praise give him some praise give him some praise give him some praise do I have kingdom builders in the house of the Lord do I have kingdom builders in the house of the Lord people that are ready to be used by God to build a house hey, hey. I feel in my spirit the Lord is saying this service is just for set up he's setting up somebody for their blessing he's setting up somebody for that next level this is a setup. Somebody say a setup. Set you thought you were coming for a service throughout these four days. The Lord is just setting you up. Come on. Please let's have our seats. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you, Jesus. There no one else. You are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. First Chronicles chapter 17 from verse 1 up to 4 oh holy spirit we welcome you today fill us with your presence as we give you the praise Thank you very much, Tim. Let's give them a hand. Wow. Wow. 
what a team they are so anointed hallelujah the atmosphere is already charged up let me take this time to greet everybody in the mighty name of jesus your amen is not good enough can i hear a louder amen can i hear kingdom builders shouting a louder hallelujah let me also take this time to honor the angel of the house apostle moromoti jeki cavello what a man look at the neighbor and say what a man together with first lady pastor precious cavello hallelujah they are indeed a blessing not only to faith covenant ministry but they are a blessing to the kingdom of god um we learn a lot from them in fact if you pass by my church you'll find a pulpit like this is the one i copied from here me i'm not afraid and intimidated to copy i don't know about you why suffer while somebody has already seen it i mean he made it easier for us we have looked for it for a very long time he said hey pastor t these are connections hallelujah wow this level of excellence never stops to amaze me every time i want to be inspired i want to be encouraged i i go in your page go in your page and go through it and uh one time i was outside town we made a, a, a preparations or arrangements rather that is coming to be a blessing to our people and i had to to travel that sunday and he went preached without me and most people were like how can you leave a guest preacher with your church i said he's my elder brother i trust him i know him i don't need to be around when he's preaching i don't need to be they are certain you know they are pastors and they are poachers they are those you can never trust even if you are around you will never trust them with your pulpit but he was able to do without us never even scared of anything and he did a tremendous job hallelujah come on go ahead first lady will celebrate you come on faith covenant church celebrate the angel that the lord has given to you when i came back on sunday my church was not receptive to me i was like what did this man do to my church <laughs> said you, you don't preach like pastor cabello um also all the five-fold ministry that is here I recognize you all of you men of God I, I humble myself before you I humble myself before you um, I'm not alone I'm with my wife my support structure hallelujah hallelujah can you just stand the seconds to show them your beauty come on don't be jealous men of god got some eyes also they can see <laughs> and i see some faces from bible life ministry and thank you for coming to support us let's stand on our way on, on our feet uh bible life Klokwen, open your eyes we are here to be to copy open open I, I i i i love that gentleman who is standing in front of we don't have that in our church i i feel like we are in america guys copy, copy. You, you you saw gentlemen right now when i'm preaching you don't write notes you know my messages you copy you are busy taking notes around <laughs> pastor rodney apostle Roy. good to see you my brothers first chronicles chapter 17 we are going to read from verse 1 up to 4 then we go to chapter 22 verse 7 now it came to pass when david was dwelling in his house that david said to nathan the prophet see now i dwell in a house of cedar but the but the ark of the covenant of the lord is under ten curtains then nathan said to david do all that is in your heart for god is with you but it happened that night that the word of the lord came to nathan saying go and tell my servant david that says the lord you shall not build me a house to dwell in it let's go to 22 verse 
chapter 22 verse 7 are we there say amen if you are there and david said to solomon my son as for me it is in it was in my mind to build a house to the name of the lord my god but the word of the lord came to me saying you have shed much blood and have made great wars you shall not build a house for my name because you have shed much blood on the earth in my sight behold a son shall be born of you who shall be a man of rest i will give him rest from all his enemies around his name shall be solomon for i will give peace and quietness to Israel in his days. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. We can't do it on our own. We depend on your Holy Spirit. May your word come out with such uh, simplicity, but with the power to transform life. I declare that Jehovah, your word, will go out and fulfill that which has been sent to you. Your people are equally anointed to receive the mystery of your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Take over as we step back this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. amen. If you are expecting something, shout a louder hallelujah. Amen. Please you may sit on the devil's head. This evening I want to speak the message to you entitled, Partnering with God for the generational blessing partnering with god for a generational blessing our objective is basically to to help us on how to activate a, a generational blessing upon our lives and upon our families hallelujah i've come to understand and realize that our god is a god of generations our god is a god of generations in other words he never does anything without thinking about the generations whatever he does he's not only thinking about the now he's not only thinking about this moment but he is also thinking about generations to come can i hear a better amen that's why exodus chapter 3 verse 6 the bible says he is god of abraham he is god of isaac he is god of jacob and repeatedly throughout the bible genesis even up to Acts, you keep on hearing the bible says the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of what of jacob why because he is a generational god everything he does it is not only for the now it is not only for the moment but it's for all generations to come hallelujah and god since we are his people and he created us he wants us to operate in his frequency he wants us to operate at his level as he is a generational god he wants us to impact the generations he wants us to impact the generations he wants us to shift the lives of generations that will be coming after us somebody shout hallelujah God wants us to impact. He expects us to leave a legacy for generations. He expects us to be what? Generational thinkers. He expects us to leave a mark for our children and for those that will be coming after them. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 13 verse 22 it says a good man or a wise man leaves inheritance for his children's children and a wealth of the sinner is laid up to the rest i wonder i'm hearing somebody saying what does all this have to do with building somebody say we are coming the bible says a wise man can i have three people here quickly the bible says a wise man leaves three people i need to i'm preaching this more time the bible says a wise man leaves inheritance for his children's children a wise man remember he's a god of abraham he's a god of, of, of isaac he's a god of jacob and also the bible says i will visit your iniquities up to the third generation so every time whatever god does it's a generational thing it is not only for a moment but it has to touch and to empower all the generations that are coming after and god says you are my creation you have to operate in my frequency as i do so shall you do because a son does what he sees the father do Carlo now the bible says a, a wise man leaves inheritance for his children's children make a line for to face this side now this man the bible expects him to leave not only for himself he expects him to leave and empower two generations this one and this one 
a wise man or a good man leaves inheritance for his children children so this man here he has to work so hard to leave a good inheritance which the son is coming to eat and he will not be able to finish it he will eat it and not finish it and this one will come also and eat not what the father made but what the great grandfather made so God wants us to live with that kind of mindset. Now, look at this thing. If where you are sitting, you are carrying is either a compendium of curses or a compendium of blessings. It's either you are carrying a compendium of curses or a compendium of curses. It's either your father left a blessing. Now, because your father left a blessing, a blessing is able to water the ground and it makes the ground to produce quickly. Now you are able to thrive. You are able to flow simply because your father has worked hard. Now it is not only about your father. But you as you are sitting there this evening. Whatever decision you are making. It's either it's uplifting your generation. Or it's taking your generation down. Whatever decision you are making these three days. It's either you will be empowering your generation. Or dispowering your generation. Hey. What will your children and our children say about us? I am blessed because of my great grandfather. I am blessed because, listen, all of you with children or without children, you are carrying seeds. The Bible says in Hebrews, it's in chapter 9, verse 7, it says, Even live paid tithe in Abraham's loins. Life was not yet born, but the great grandfather was able to influence his future. He was not yet born. By the time Abraham was paying tithe, Leif was not yet born. But Leif, Abraham, a great grandfather, was able to influence what? The future of the great grandchild. There are two things that you can send to your future. Number one is prayer. It can run to your future and wait for you. And when you get there, it says, we have been waiting for you. And you see things happening. The second thing, it's a seed. It's giving. It's giving. Your seed can, the Bible says, in the morning while you are young, sow your seed. In the evening while you are old, sow your seed. For you do not know which one will come to pass. The Bible says, while the earth remains, a seed time and a harvest. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. shall never cease while the earth if you wake up in the morning you are able to touch the earth that principle has not just stopped waking it has not just stopped waking so you can be able to send your seed in the future now a rich man a wise man now this man he should not be able to live for himself he should live so much to empower his next generation Hallelujah, guys, you may have your seat. What will your generation say about you? What will the great grandchildren say about me? Will we make life easier for them? Will they say we have been blessed because of our fathers? Hallelujah. But now, and I think David understood this principle very well. David understood this principle very well. A God came to David. Before going any further, you know, I have a friend, we have a family friend. Uh, we grew up together, got saved together, and went to the same church. Later, he went to a different church. And we, we, we do sometimes pray together and hang around together. For a very long time, I think we've been friends for close to 10 years. I was with him recently just in a restaurant having coffee. This guy says to me, we are talking about different things. He says to me, do you know that the land I'm staying in, in Gaps, right around city center, I was given by my father-in-law. My fa- not only a land, a 1,000 square meter with a house. That's why in life you should not try to compete. You don't know where other people are coming from and what is. You don't know what is blowing them from behind. I've been living with this guy. He's getting whatever you want to get. While I am busy trying to get the house, busy trying to get the pro, he's already ahead of me. And the father-in-law is a believer. Yes. Yes. He understood the secrets of the Lord. Yes. Ha, 
Hallelujah. Listen to me. It's not enough to leave a car for them. It's not enough to leave a house for them. It's not enough to leave a land for them. It, one thing that you should leave for them is a blessing. Somebody say a blessing. Now I understand why Jacob cried and said, Esau cried and said, is there no a blessing? At least one blessing remaining for me. At least one blessing. Because with the blessing, they can lose the car, but they will get it again. With the blessing, they can experience a setback, but the blessing can cause them to accelerate. With the blessing, somebody shout, Lord, bless me. The blessing will empower you for prosperity. The Bible says the blessing of the Lord makes one rich and addeth no sorrow. When the blessing is upon you, you will attract some good things. You smell good and attract opportunities. You smell good wherever you step. Because of the blessing, doors will be open. The blessing is able to go behind closed doors and speak on your behalf. The blessing will make the ground easier for you. Somebody say, I need the blessing. It's okay to work hard and to get all the things, to get all the money, to get all the, the, the cars, to get all the property, to get But the greatest thing that we can leave for generations to impact generations is what? It's a blessing. Now, David understood that. David has the desire to build a house for the Lord. And he's here with the prophet Nathan. And he said, prophet, I want to build a house for the Lord. And the prophet says, the Lord has seen your heart. Therefore, do what is in your heart. Remember, David has a special walk with God. This is a man who caved his way into the heart of God until he caved his own name into the heart of God. Until God called me a man after my own heart. He's the one who kept. There are two people who designed and came up with their name in the presence of God. It's Abraham and David. Abraham is my friend. David, a man after man. They knew how to walk with God. They knew how to take step with step with God. Now, this man is so passionate about God. He loves God so much. Now, he says that the tabernacle, he says that the house of God need to be built. And he says, no. The Ark of the Covenant is just there. This is not proper. I believe he was feeling guilty as the Bible says in Haggai chapter 2. He says, you guys stay in panel houses. You stay in beautiful houses. You live and go while I'm staying in what? In a destroyed, in a deteriorating place. He said, that's why you gain, you get wages and like you are putting in a bag with the whole. Why? Because of my house. So David said, no, okay. But no, 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 no. There is no how we can live. Somebody say, there is no how we can keep on renting. Some of you, you look like you love renting. It's like you, you want to stay here. Say it, Laura. There is no how we can keep on renting. We need to get our own land. We need to get our own building, rather. We need to get our own building. So David says, no, no, I need to build a house for the Lord. Monitors, please. I need to build a house for the Lord. Nathan went ahead. But at night, the Lord said to, to, said to Nathan, go and tell David that he has too much blood in his hands. He has too much blood. He has fought many wars. I cannot have him to build a house for me. But his son from his loins will come and build a house for me. Now, David was so passionate about that. He wanted to build a house for the Lord. Now, when God says, David, it shall not be you building my house. He said, okay, I am going to partner with you. I may not be able to do it myself. But please, allow me at least to partner with you. Somebody said, God, allow me to partner with you. He said, no, no, allow it. I'm going to partner with you. As now, as you move on, we meet with David. He's calling his son uh, 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 Solomon. He said, Solomon, I wanted to build a house for the Lord. But the Lord refused. said, I should not do that. Chapter 22, we see David now begin to give offering. Begin to call people together to come and collect and raise offering for what? For the house of the Lord. David would have said, oh, okay, it's none of my business. Oh, okay, it's okay. I don't need to push anymore. Oh, okay. You should have felt like, ah, okay, no, let me just leave this thing. Ah, it's a relief to my spirit. It's a relief to my budget. He said, but David says, no, 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 no. This is the, David said, no, 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 I'm not going to just sit down. I am going to do something. Look at them and tell them, let's do something about the house of the Lord. I can't hear you better. Can you shout, let's do something about the house of the Lord. 
So David went out and collected, collected out the, 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 the right materials. He gave himself and he called the people to come and to give to us the house of the Lord. Faith covenant. He saw it as an opportunity to partner with God in order to invest. David understood it will not only take material things to, for Solomon to lead the people and to build the house. That's why he said, for the work is greater. For the work is greater. So he wanted to provoke at least a blessing for his son. A generational blessing. How did he do that? By partnering up with God. Look at them and slap them and tell them, it's time to partner with God for our generational blessing. God gave him an opportunity. Listen to me. God is giving some people an opportunity here. The building of the house of the Lord is an opportunity where one of the things that God wants to do in your life is to live a generational blessing. This house shall be erected as an altar in the land. Prayers shall be going up there. Praises shall be going up there. Powers of darkness will be coming down because of the prayers and the intercession. And every time your prayers are going up, the Lord will remember you and remember your generation. Hey, he said to Colonius, your prayers have I heard. Your giving have I remembered. The prayers God hears, but giving God remembers. He said, your prayer. So every time God looks, is somewhere this side. I think I've been there. Apostle, I saw directions. I drove there. I didn't want to get lost. I've been there and prayed a bit, tapped into the anointing. And I am ready also to give. Because also I need what? Blessing for my generations. So as the thing shall be erected there, it shall be speaking blessings upon nations. It shall be bringing demonic powers on their knees. And every time God looks at it, God will remember your offering. Even when you are gone 20 years, your prayers, your seed will be interceding for your children. Your seed will be interceding. This is, tell your neighbor, it's an opportunity we cannot miss. <laughs> you have given when we are renting here. You have played a part on something which is not our own. Now God is saying, we are, I'm giving you what is your own. I'm giving you what belongs to you and belongs to me. Hey, Hallelujah. Number two, we hear the Bible says, while this guy Jacob was laying his head down, he saw angels going up and coming down. Ascending and he said, wow, I did not know that I am in what? In the presence or in the house of the Lord. That's where destinies are changed. That's where destinies are shaped. That's where lives are empowered. But listen to me, when lives are shaped and empowered, who gets blessed much? The one who made it happen. I mean, look at all that missionaries did. We were sitting. They built hospital in Monopoly. They built hospitals in Ramosa. They took over built churches. And we were there. That's why we remain stagnant and poor. We didn't contribute to it. So we sat back and we thought they were helping us. Wherever they were, whereas they were robbing us an opportunity. People always see a giving opportunity as an opportunity of losing. Listen to me. With God, you don't lose. God is not a taker. God is a giver. Whatever you give to him, you must percent give it back to you. Hey, the earth is the Lord's and its fullness therein. Silver and gold belongs to him. Everything belongs. Why should he take from you? But there is a principle that he has set. There is a principle has set in life that is only when you do. Listen, there are different kind of keys, and different kind of keys open. Do you have your key? Different kind of keys open. Different kind of yeah. Here, here is Brutus' key. This key cannot open the house. Cannot open the house. It can only open one door. And in the kingdom of God, there is something like a major key. Or a key that opens all the doors. No. There's nothing like that. He said to Peter, I will give you what? Keys. Not key. Plural. Keys. The 
there is a key which is called the prayer which can open something and there is another key called the giving which can open something there is another key called there are different kind of keys and this different kind of keys open different kind of doors the problem is you want to when it comes to dealing with demonic things yes you can pray but poverty demons don't understand prayer hey. Poverty demons don't understand prayer. We we have we if there's a continent which is supposed to be wealthy, it's Africa. In Africa, we don't pray, we vibrate. We vibrate. We don't speak in tongues, we speak in tongues. We all kinds of tongues. We speak, we move from Brazil. Brazilian Ronaldino Roberto Rabacatalos. We pray all manner of prayers, but we are still here. Why? Because we are using a wrong key to try to open another door. When it comes to poverty, it understands the power of the seed. Muruti, I don't care what other people say. In fact, if you are still struggling with tithing, we are not talking to you. If, 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 if that, that's children's search material. With tithe, you are still thinking, Oh, uh, tithing is uh, I say, it's for grace, it's not, it's old testament. Those things are key. only if I will understand if you give more than 10 percent. The Bible says in Acts chapter 2, from verse 44 to 45, it says they were selling their property and they were bringing the offering to the feet of the apostles under grace. We don't give tithe under grace. We bring all. Tithe is an introduction. If you are still, if you are still here, you, ah, I don't even want to waste my time on you. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. So your offering will become a remembrance before the Lord. Can you give me Luke chapter, Luke chapter 7 verse 4? It says verse 4 and 5. It says, when they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly saying that he was worthy for him should do, that you should do this. Verse 5 says, let's go to verse 5. It says, for he loves our nation. How do we see that? Because he built us a synagogue. He built us a synagogue. This man, one man, one man. Here we are many. I don't know how many we are in Pastor's group. We are many. One man built a synagogue, built a church. And listen to me. It's not because he had more. Giving is not the matter of the pocket. It's the matter of the heart. If you, you can have all in your heart, in your hands, but if your heart is empty of generosity and is greedy, you will never give. Giving is not the matter of how much you have. It's a matter of the heart. That's why the Bible says one time Jesus was collecting an offering. He was standing by the altar collecting an offering. The Bible says one widow came and gave how much to might. And every rich people they were giving, wealthy people they were giving. But only when this widow came, Jesus said, wait a minute. This woman has given more. Why? She gave her all. Wait, Apostle. I thought because Jesus knew, number one, the woman was a widow. Number two, she, Jesus knew the woman gave her all. Jesus was going to say, hey, please, ushers, come and take all the offering. Let's help him. Let's help him. Uh, you know, people who complain about giving, I wonder what we'll say if Jesus was the one preaching. Where's the offering basket? Can we have it? Offering basket, quickly. Come, 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 come. In church, Apostle, stand here. Too might. It's too small. It's invisible from a distance. It means Jesus, as people were coming to give, he was paying attention. No, no, no. And watching. How will somebody see that you are giving too much? Unless he's paying attention. And this is not Apostle Kabbalah. It's Jesus. People were coming giving. He says, oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Try it on Sunday. You will be in front of the media, the voice. Apostle eating money for the poor. There is something I don't understand.
understand about the kingdom of God. There was a widow in Zarephath. And when the prophet was going hungry, going through Elijah, going through a rough season, God said to him, I've spoke to a, a, a widow in Zarephath. There were wealthy and rich people there. But he chose out a widow. He chose out a widow. He said, go to a widow. Why? Because it is only giving that can break your poverty and release a generational blessing upon your life. As you are ready, you are getting ready to give to the house of the Lord. I see God opening the heavens and giving you a rain, a rain of blessings, a rain of ideas, a rain which will set you up for the next level. Shout aloud the hallelujah. God can give you one idea. Thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. 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 Jesus said next to offering basket. If you are still complaining about money. There was a rich young ruler. You remember him? A rich young ruler came to Jesus. <coughs> and he said, excuse me. And he said, Jesus, what should I do to receive the kingdom of God? Jesus said, the Bible says, he said, okay, you can pray. You can forgive the sins. You can say, he says, ah, that's your such material. I have done all those things. Hey, listen, I think the pastor Gabriel loves you. Apostle loves you. The Bible says, Jesus looked at him and loved him. And loved him. I thought it would say, go away because he loved him. The Bible says he looked at him and loved him and he said, One thing lacketh. Go and sell everything you have. What manner of love is this one? People are getting ready to sell cars to build the house of the Lord. People are ready to sell plots to build the house of the Lord. People are getting ready to sell houses to build the house of Jesus. The Bible, he loved him. And he said, Hey. Go and sell everything he that he loved him. Hey. Apostle called you because he loves you. Yeah. Every man who tells you not to give, they don't love you. No. Wow. Wow. I stopped when all this halabaloos and all this criticism started about giving and stuff like that. I got intimidated. I stopped giving, talking about giving. For some time, I, 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 I've refrained from the message subject. And I was just talking about all this good stuff. The Bible says, the things that our ears are itching to hear. <laughs> but now there was attack after attack, delay after delay. This family, that this family, that this family. I said, what is happening? God says, yeah, it's my principle. Hey. I was looking at the people, Apostle. Because I was thinking, the economy is tough. Families are struggling. People don't have money. Everybody is struggling. Why should I get the least they have? God says it's a principle. A principle works everywhere. If it is my word. If it is my word, preach it. I said, God, have you seen the faces of this man when I'm preaching about giving? He says, even Moses, I warned him about that face, the face of the people. So go, I am with you. Well, what you have to do is to what? To preach it. In fact, the Bible says the rich young ruler, as you go back to the message, the rich young ruler, the Bible says, he went away sorrowful. He went away. Look at the man and ask them, why are you sorrowful? It's easy to see a, demon, a, a, a poverty demon. When you talk about money in the secular, they get excited. When you talk about money in other outside conference, they get excited. Talk about, about money in church. A demon of poverty begins to make people to be angry and to frown. Check the, the face of your neighbor. You will see. Check the face of your neighbor. You will see. Why do you get angry when we mention money? It is not to you. It is the spirit. It knows the giving in church will influence your generations. So it's making you to hate the subject of giving. So that you don't break out of the chain. Somebody say, I am generous. Somebody say, I am a giver. When I'm in church apostle and somebody gets angry when I'm preaching about money, I know I come closer to them. I know we need to help them. I come closer. We, they need help. We need to help them. Somebody shout hallelujah. So David partnered with God. He said, God, you did not give me an opportunity to build. But this is what I am going to do. I am going to partner with you by giving. No one asked him to give. He gave freely and willingly. Why? 
Why? Because he was doing out of understanding what is provoking. One, giving out of love. Two, out of understanding. When you love, giving is easy. When you struggle with giving, without your love. Now, if you struggle with giving towards, we, 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 somebody say we are beginning. We, we, we have given, but we are beginning to give. As you are going into the next level of the house of the Lord. Building the house of the Lord. Why? Because God wants to elevate his people. David said, God, please allow me to partner with you. Out of understanding. How many of you are in love when they have never given anything out? Run for your life. <coughs> Run for... When you love, Charlie, you give. Hey, Solomon said, because of the affection. <laughs> Faith covenant. It's easy when you love. The Bible says they first gave their heart to us. Then it was easier for them to give other things. The first thing is what you have to do is to give your heart. Is to love God with all of your heart. Yes, sir. I remember about 13, 14 years ago. When I was dating my wife, I was still staying in Francis Town Apostle. I drove all the way here to come and check my family just from Monopoly and also to check on her. We went to OK store. It was OK behind BTV. It was OK by then. So we went there and um, she just wanted to get a few things. I thought she wanted a drink or just a few things. Now she began to fill up the thing. Fill up the thing. Fill up the thing. The brother is around. Now I am following her. She knows she can take care of her own budget. So I'm following her. When, she, when we got there by the teal, I said, no, no, I will take care of them. Hey. Uh, love. 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 I will take care of it. The only thing in my car was money to drive back to Francis. <laughs> love made me to give everything. <laughs> After checking the price, that's when they can respond. Somebody said, giving out of love. Firstly, we don't give to buy. We give because we love. Now, I gave everything. Gave everything. Now, it's my time to go back. I dropped her home. I still behave like everything is fine. I'm the man. I'm the man of God. <laughs> Everything is fine. After dropping, I have to drive back. Now I'm here playing. What should I do? There is what? Is it Taum there? Yeah, Taum. I drove back and there's a free session for Taum. There's that, is it Shell or what? what am I? Total. Yeah, I went to Taum. I said, you know what, guys? Because I don't trust all of you, it's better you pay. <laughs> Somebody said, wisdom is a principal thing. is bad. Let's move on. Let's move on. I see your love stories also. Let's move on. We are here to preach. Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 18. <laughs> they, Nehemiah says, Then I told them of the hand of God which, God which was upon me as also the king's word that he has spoken unto me. And they said, let's say that together. And they said And they said so they strengthened thy hands for the work of the Lord. They put their hands together. They came together. As the people who came also when David was calling. This is Nehemiah also. The Bible says, I, could, I told them the hand of the Lord is upon me. And the Lord has set us up to build. And as Nehemiah was saying that, the Bible says they brought their hands together. They Stopped every project and said, Now we are going after the man of God, Nehemiah. We heard what he said, and we know the hand of the Lord is upon him. They said, We are going after him. Every personal project has to stop. Every other thing should lose my focus. Our focus is in building the house of the Lord. And the Bible says they begin to build. In fact, when he called them, they said, Let us rise and build. 
Do I have faith covering people who are saying, let's arise and build? Can I hear the women saying, let's arise and build? Can I hear the men shouting, let's arise and build? Can I hear the youth shouting, let's arise and build? Can I hear the whole church shouting, let's arise and build? Faith covenant, I hear apostle says, I see the hand of God upon my life. And the Lord says, we have found a plot. And shout, let's arise and build. And when he said that they shouted, let's arise with one voice, one spirit. Listen, everybody that were participating, it's not about the amount. It's not the amount to give. It's the amount of the sacrifice. It's not the amount one gives. But it's the sacrifice that matters. Which means no one can be left outside. Because the other one's ability is this level. The other one's ability is this level. So God does not look at the amount. But he looks at the sacrifice. I'm not saying we can give God everything when I'm saying like that. But the Bible says every man should give according to how I have dealt with him. You know, they are giving and they is tipping God. Giving is not done haphazardly. Giving is not done anyhow. The Bible says let every man give according to how I have dealt. All of us here, God has dealt with us in different measures with us in different and every time we give we should give in accordance to the measure which God has given to us listen there are people who are not in the level of giving 20 pula and they're giving every Sunday 20 pula it's a tip uh, I'm feeling resist I'm feeling that demon you, you remember it I'm feeling that demon. You remember it? Some things we do them religiously. The Bible says David prepared his offering. How many of us prepare our offering? The only thing we do is to prepare our suits. Prepare. Hey, tell my one dear, I was at the gym with a hairstyle like I'm so sonta. Hey, take it up with this suit to dry clean like I'm so sonta. Have you prepared your offering? If you don't feel the offering leaving your hand, you will not feel when the blessing comes in. If you don't feel the offering, the offering is supposed to speak to you like Isaac and to Abraham. He said, the day I see the firewood, the day I see the stones and the, 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 the altar, where is the offering? Where is the offering? Now, I love the word of God. It addresses everybody. It addresses those that are very high. It addresses those that are here. It, you know you can give 10,000 and God says you are coughing. You are, you are, you are, you are joking. Because, because it's just a cough. Because he knows how much. You, you know a tip after they served you coffee. When you give and everybody's sleeping hands. Those that are counting money and they are, the, 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 the accountant in church. They're like wow. This guy gave. God is like that. It's a tip. Can you do Ask your neighbor. They look too serious. I'm getting scared. Am I safe? Ask your neighbor, are you giving God or are you tipping God? Ask him, are you giving God or are you tipping God? So they came together to build. They, came, they forgot about everything. They came after Nehemiah, the leader. Faith covenant. Let's join our hands together. It's a long journey. But together as one, we are winning. With the Lord on our side, we are winning. Homa nate ya muruti huto hote rahile kere ke osa na madia chwanga Amerika. Kante na karabatu. Rahile kere ke osa na madia chwanga Amerika. Those people they are sacrificing. I'm not blocking any offering from outside, but us here, we should be the first ones. Yes. 
Imagine the first time I heard Apostle speaking in a meeting somewhere. I'm like, I'm going to be part of it. Before he finished, I was, I'm thinking about if I am jumping for an opportunity and I'm not a member. And I'm not a member. You will come here dance. I will be at Bible life. When souls are getting saved, God says, the angels are like, Pastor Tuso, Apostle Royal, bless up. You are here dancing. You are wondering, why are these not moving? It's because we bought an altar for you. We built a church for you. We built a, we bought a mic for you. And you wonder why this? Because prayers are becoming what? Your, your giving is an arm. It's a remembrance. Tell anybody, your shouting is not enough. In fact, worship without giving is not complete. Worship without giving is not complete. That's why even the Israelites, they said to, to the king, to the king, is it Pharaoh? They said to him, please allow us to worship. And as they were going on, they said, give us our everything. He said, no, you can go. Look at this, Apostle. The devil will always allow you to go worship and leave your offering behind. Pharaoh said to them, you can go worship. But leave the animal, the cattle. The, the, what did Moses say? He said, will not even leave. Even a hoof. With what will we worship the Lord? With, with what? Why? Because worship without. That's why it seems that sometimes God is not moving and God is not blessing us. Check in the Old Testament and all the people that were serving God. Those guys were generous. No one loved God or was not a giver. I'm telling you, one of the first things to see if a person loves God is not prayers. Amen. Everybody can pray. Amen. It's not shouting. Everybody is shouting. Amen. It's not singing gospel. Everybody can sing gospel. Some my girl can just say, Then you are like, Then you are like, That's gospel. When there's God who thinks that, No, no, no. The love of God. Is tested when it comes to giving. Is tested. I, the Bible says to Abraham, when he gave Isaac, prepared everything, when he put him on the altar, God says, Stop. Now I know. Hey. Now I know that you love me. All along, God was not sure. <laughs> for a very long time Abraham walked with God very long time it was when he was giving his sacrificial offering God said now I saw that scripture was like uh, am I understanding proper God says now I know ask your neighbor what is what is God saying about you <laughs> I know you love God but can God says you love him four blessings I'll give you two Generational blessings that will come upon us. I'll give you two and then just few scriptures and we close. How is our time? How is our time? Okay, I'm right on time. Yes, I'm right on time. Blessing number one. Generational blessing that you shall provoke when you, when you build the house of the Lord. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 17 verse 10. God was saying to David, don't worry David. You should not worry about building the house. But one of the things that I will do for you, I will build your own house. Somebody said, the Lord building my own house. What does that mean? God will give you a blessing for property acquisition. Property acquisition. When you begin to partner with God, and one of the greatest blessings which your children can come and enjoy is land and property. I'm not sure if my great-grandchildren will find, in fact, they will not find the car I'm driving now. They'll never. My great grandchildren won't find the car I'm driving, but they will find what the land and the property. Number one blessing for a child of God, Murdi. Number one blessing is the land. God owns the whole what? The whole earth. Let's pray, God, at least from everything that you own, at least one thousand, not twenty-five, but twenty-five. At least you own everything. A thousand. God owns. The land. And people who understand the blessing of the land. Look, you are driving towards Lobatse, the society. We're looking for a place to go and pray. We have to go around Woodpecker. Go and rent out from people who understand the blessing of the understood the blessing of the land. The land. So when you partner 
partner with God. God says, I will build up on your own house. I will give you an anointing and a blessing for acquire what? Property. How many of us want to own properties? How many of us want to own houses? In fact, not a house, houses. You partner with God. As you are giving towards building the house of the Lord. The Lord is beginning to build. How? How? He can do it through favor. He can do it through giving you one idea. Which The problem is when we give to God and the Bible says give shall be given back to you more and press down shaken together. We think God is going to bring 20 plus given together. No, no, no. No. He can give you one idea which will come and bring millions and billions in your life. One idea. A godly given idea. There's one businessman under our father, Apostle of the No City. In fact, don't miss the service tomorrow. A grace will be in the house. You don't, tell him, don't miss. Apostle, three ways of dealing with the devil is through the word, is through rebuking him. You say, out. He has the proclivity of going and coming back. That's rebuking him. Number two is through the word of God. Number three is when an authority comes in a place. There is an authority, our father will be stepping in the house tomorrow. Things. He doesn't have to speak. He just comes in. The grace for success. The grace for another. Next level. There's a grace for blessing. Somebody shout hallelujah. As you give your money to us, get ready for the blessing for property. This is a place where now people will be shocked by the kind of things that God is doing in your life. This boy says, he's a man in fact. He says, every time apostle raise money for any kingdom business, I will give. He said, why? He said, I was sitting down in church. As he was preaching, God gave me an idea. And that's the idea which is giving me money. Jesus. It's amazing. People in church, others see demons. What do you see? The word is coming with anointing. You are seeing sisters and brothers. While people are getting ideas that brings wealth transfer to them. An idea. God said, I will open the windows of heaven. And what happens? An idea. He can do it through favor. That's the blessing. Blessing is favor. Blessing brings favor. Just a rush, a rush, a run through it. One time I was looking for something, and this, prop, this thing costed about 1. 1. 1.6 million. And as we come in and um, start negotiating and stuff like that, uh, they, in fact, firstly, they refused. They refused to give it to us. And they said, No, we can't give you this, this thing that you're looking for. Okay, we decided to, to do, we did not give up, but we went away and just kept on believing God. Prayed, 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 and believed God. And while we were waiting, one time they received the call, and it's the same lady who owned the same, that, that kind of a thing. He says to us, uh, you, you know, in church we, we suspect, we don't speak, we want to tell, but we don't speak openly. We just keep on saying that thing. Um, <coughs> it's a thing, it's a thing. God said, I'll give you things. <laughs> It's up to you to choose the kind of thing you want. The lady called us and says, please, can you meet? He said, okay, we met. He says, um, in fact, he was wondering why this thing cannot be bought. So he went to consult because he's a he consult traditional doctor and stuff like that. The traditional doctor says to him, there is a man of God that I see. God sees me when it comes to receiving blessing. The demons, they were able to mention my name. To say, hey, that there is a man who has been looking for this thing, you will never sell it until you go back to him. Just give him. They came back. Said, I heard I will never sell. I said, no, I don't have 1.6. He said, how much you have? I said, I have 800. He says, no, not 800. That's a half. I said, yes, that's it. Cut long story short, he went at 6. 100,000. Anointing. Grace. Why? Because when our father was building, Muruti, it was the time I was getting married when we were building that thing. Reverend Rodney will remember. It was the time I was getting married. <laughs> all the way from Francis Town. I was to super hard. I was going to sleep from the bank. We want money. 
Bushman, Rebata, my dear, I come with a man of God, eh? I'm a man of God, eh? Utolu, Rebata, my dear, but I'm not going to be brilliant. Had to go back to church, I mean, to the bank. God, Buhati. Came on Saturday, we had a meeting. I'm showing them the Buhati. They counted, they counted, they counted, they got happy. We set the date to go and give the Buhati out. This is Saturday. Sunday, I sleep. I'm driving back on Sunday, pass through the service. I'm driving back to Francis. I'm having the cash. There is a guest preacher preaching. It was a lady from my mama, I forgot. Preaching. And she was hammering, talking about giving. I took the Lobola money. Hey! basket while the offering was the basket was moving away from me my eyes were were following it. my eyes were following it from there i never heard the weight i never heard what was happening next <laughs> i don't know what came upon me <laughs> you know there are two gates you know them at, at our main church there are two gates there is that one for the pastors. There is that one for the public. And I was still using that one for the public. But that day, I used the one for the pastors. Because I thought somebody would say, Hey, Muruti, you, you, brother, you made a, a mistake. Here is the Lord. My son, my son. The Lord says I should go back. The offer. Nothing. Hey, the car was heavy to Francis Town. The car was heavy. Ask your neighbor, have you given? You better understand that is set. The uncle saw the money. And money is gone. And money is gone. <laughs> when God wants to take you to the next level, he will break you and cause you to sacrifice. I'll talk about the sacrifice at the end. I'm about to close about the sacrifice. Hallelujah. Now, when about five years later, we get this thing, the Spirit of the Lord reminded me. You remember. Remember I said, an orphan can go ahead of you. And wait for you and keep on clipping. Come, brother. You are doing well. That's your offering clipping. Come, brother. Dr. Stima says, it can leave your hand, but never leaves your life. <laughs> offering in church can leave your hand but never leave you. You will always meet with it on the other side of life. So I want you to pray and to believe God and to say, God, make me generous in this season. Make me generous this season. It's amazing how all, most people hear God when it comes to who to marry, when it comes to what shop to do, but never when it comes to giving. Why do you, brother, why do you only hear God and says no? There's a sister, so and so, you have to, you have to marry. Why? In marriage. Why do you only hear when God says, when you say no, God said you should give me. Why? Why? I think God should also talk to you about giving. If God does not talk to you about giving, speak to yourself. Don't wait. Take the word and do what? Access to supernatural supply. That's number two. Access to supernatural supply. Solomon was operating in what? In a supernatural supply of the Lord. The Bible says he was one of the wisest and richest kings that ever lived. Theologians were calculating his wealth. It was said to be 2.1 trillion. Solomon. And how did he get it? It was all supernatural. You know, listen to me. Listen to me. The season that we are coming in as the church of God, education will not get you. It's not enough to get you where you want to go. I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm saying it's not enough. Hard work will not get you things and where you are going. Connections will not get you. The Bible says the horse is prepared for battle, but victory cometh from the Lord. It is not for him who winneth, nor for the one who runneth, but it is for the Lord that gives what mercy and grace. Are you tired of being ordinary? Are you tired? As a child of God, you cannot always look around yourself and everything that you have, Bishop, is all about your hard work and your toil and your connection. Where is God? 
what is the use of favor then what is the use of grace then where is God where is God let's test God tell your neighbor let's test God the same friend I'm talking about one time he had 40,000 he said no I want to buy a van because he wanted to do a farm he said farming he said I want to buy a van he said God I'm buying a van what did he do? Faith. Somebody say faith. I want to show that God wants to move supernaturally in our lives. He took papers and started to distribute them around in people's windscreen. I want a van. He's not putting the price. I want a van. I want a van. And the wife is saying, Why are you always you, you remember? Uh, uh, okay, let's not go there. <laughs> so the wife is complaining, Why do you put in people's windows, green screen, and stuff like that. He kept on going around. He says, No, I want a van. One month, kitty, 40,000. Two months, kitty, nothing. He says, You should just give up. He says, No. One time, a man calls him. A white man calls him and pack and says, Hey, I've seen a note somewhere here as we're cleaning that you need a van. Do you still need it? Or have you found one? He says, No, I haven't found it. He says, Come. He went there. The man opens the garage. Uh, CD. It's a husband. The man opens the garage. There's a V6 with all these big tires. It's there and there's no even air in the tires. He says, here is the van. He says, he walked around. He said, yes, it's mine. How much does he have? 40,000. He says, yes, it's mine. The man says, yeah, okay, it's yours? Yes, yeah, yeah, even I believe in me, I believe it's yours. He says, you believe? He says, yeah, we are together in faith. He said, sharp. <laughs> we are together. He says, okay, how much do you have? He says, no, no, in fact, this car is mine. I have 40,000. The man says, what? 40,000 for this. Do you see this thing is telling you? I'm using a car. We use it once in a while. He says, yes. said, ah, you know what? You are lucky because we don't have time. We are to live in two days' time. I've been trying to sell this thing. We are going back to our country. No one wants to buy it. Bring that money, money and get out of my house. <laughs> Bring that thing and get out of my house with that car. God wants God is a supernatural supplier. Yes. When the children of Israel, they were hungry on the desert, what did he do? He opened the heavens and dropped manna for them. T-bone steak was falling from the sky. And well cooked, they were eating it. This God, when they were thirsty, he opened the rock. It gave them water. This God cannot only wait for your degree. He can do more than that. This God can do more than he's able to do extremely abundantly and above all that we think and ask. He can! But if we are listen, we are limiting God. He's able to do according to our ability of our availability to him. We are limiting him. Somebody say, why is this God too big? But I can't experience him. The thing is your measure that you give to him. The measure by the same nature you give, so shall you receive. God can be as big as what? God can be, okay, let me get a new bottle, then we close with, with water. Brother, come, the Asha, come and help me. God can be as big as, let, let's go by this, is it, is it life? Okay. As big as a bottle like this. He says, this is favor. This is blessing. This is next level. This is marriage. This is, remember, he's not a waster. Immediately you are full, he stops. It, more is remaining. What is the problem? The capacity. Do you know what God is doing with this building campaign? You want to increase your capacity. So you receive according to your capacity. Let's close here. John, uh, uh, give me uh, Psalms 126. When the pastor drinks water, you, you enter seat. You don't, look, you don't look at the mouth of a man of God. <laughs> Let's go. We are close with this scripture. Psalms. But God is giving you what? into supernatural supply. 
where people will look at you and say what manner what? you know what is manner as you are going them route you manner it was an exclamation mark psalms 126 from verse 1 up to the last one manner the word manner is an exclamation it's like ah it's like what is this it's like oh ah where is this coming from so when the meat was falling that was not the name they were all shocked like ah manna then that's how it was called people are about to see a manna blessing they will see you driving a car and ask you is it a borrowed car you say it's mine say manna they'll see you sitting in the veranda of the house they'll say is where you checking somebody it is my house like manna the wife, the lady you are sitting next to, I want to propose. Is it, say, it's my wife, my brother. You want to propose my wife? Mana, you. How can you? Mana. The mana blessing. Get tired when everything you have is something that you have toiled and worked hard for. Do business with God. Sam, let's go there. A song. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, listen, we were like those who were what? Dreaming. Because they've been in bondage for a very long time. I want to close here. Move on. Then our mouth were filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nation, the Lord has done great things for them. Uh huh. The Lord has done great things for us and we are glad. The Lord is about to do great things for you if it, faith covenant in Jesus name. Bring back our captivity, oh Lord, as the streams in the south. Move on. Let's read together. Those uh, move on. With rejoicing. Go to the, verse, the previous verse, five, verse 5. Look at 6 says continually. Now, this one says, Those who sow in what? In tears. We are moving to the level of sowing in tears. There is a vow and there is a sacrifice. A vow is when we say, God, if you give me, remember Hannah, if you give me this child, I will give back the child to you. But now a sacrifice is when we have something already. But it was earmarked for something else. You have it already. But it's for something else. It's for rental. It's for school fees. It's for that. And now you sacrifice it to give it to the Lord. Now we are moving in the next level. I want you to tell your neighbor, get ready. We have given. But you are about to give. No, no, I don't mean today. Relax. 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 But even if it has to be today, it can be today. Don't worry. It can be today. Those who sow in tears. Listen, if you have never given an offering where you thought you made a mistake, you are still joking. We're in a church service in Francis Town. Rebel know the man I'm talking about. We're in, sitting in front as pastors. The preacher was preaching, was collecting offering for building. The wife, they only had one Volvo, one car. As the man was moving in the anointing, the lady took the car keys, ran to the altar to give the husband grant. <laughs> Where are you going? <laughs> Next time you get married, get married to somebody who hears God like you. Husband says, no, no. How are you dropping the kids to school? How are you dropping the kids to school tomorrow? How are you joking? <laughs> if you have never given an offering where you felt the pain, where you were in tears when you go to, I'm talking about God now. Remember here I said, if you're in the level of tithing, it's not yours. We, we, we are now at, we are still, still you want to achieve by hard work toiling and it's okay it's okay we are talking about doing business with God here God is not a cheater and a taker he's a giver remember why in tears because it's valuable because it's important because it is the last it might be the only thing that you have God came to 
to the widow and said, Give me the last cake. He said, Ah, it is only for my child and it is the last meal. Listen, God says, Bring through Elijah. The man of God said, Bring. The woman says, It's children's bread. He said, Bring that children's bread. I will eat it first. <laughs> People who understand principles, you know, if you want to operate with God, just get the way the it is. Elijah the prophet. Everybody has something to give to the house of the Lord. He ate, but the Bible says the cruise never ran dry. Talk about Abraham. He gave the child of the promise after waiting for a very long time. Talk about God. He gave the only son, Jesus. You think it was easy for God to see. That's why when Jesus was being crucified, God looked aside because it was painful. And Jesus said, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? It was not easy for him. He gave the best and the last. There's no other Jesus. That's the only one. So, those who sow in tears. We're getting in a season where people will bring <laughs> khakis in tears. Ah, certificates for blood in tears. This is the season you are coming. Uh, 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 let me just speak. You build your church by giving 20 people. Hello? Here, somebody said next level. next level. David one time found a man and said, Are you for us or are you against us? Ask your neighbor, are you still with us or against us? <laughs> Let's move on. They show you in tears. Let's move on. Let's move on. Next six. He who continually, not only giving once. Over, continually working with God in agreement. Listen, because our hearts are out there for God and we give our, our hearts out to him, we are going to give and continue giving and continue until we see that building complete. We are going to tell the neighbor, we are going to give and continue giving until the building and God, this is where now the Bible says he shall meet our needs according to his riches in glory. Move on. Bearing seeds for sowing shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheep. You see rejoicing comes at the end. I'm going to give you one script. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. Then we stand on our feet. 2 Corinthians chapter 8. If you have never given in tears, you don't know what supernatural supply of God is. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. Second Corinthians eight two. Hallelujah. Give me verse seven first, then we'll go back to verse two. Let's go to seven first. We we'll close here. Lift up your hands and begin to Just worship two minutes, just worship two minutes, just worship two minutes. We are talking about the generational blessing. As you are worshiping, 
Mungu muhubu aka kwa sokera you feel pain around your navel muhubu aka kwa sokera come come get your healing we are breaking every generational curse upon your life you feel that god is setting you loose god is setting you free come you feel there's a pain in your navel right here in your in your belly there's a pain in your belly around here god is giving you that supernatural healing hey, hey! Basa tarabos kata one ki hai mase ke terebos kata lebra ge dererebos kata labra han dererebos Lord we release your healing virtue we release your healing virtue Give me the scripture we'll get to this It says as you abound in everything I feel the anointing you are bound in speech you are bound in knowledge in diligence see the in love for us see that you also abound in this grace what grace grace of giving you will never walk in the grace of receiving until you walk in the grace of giving there is what is called a grace for prosperity a grace for business a grace for breakthrough when grace is upon you you do it with ease what people struggle to do you do it with ease why? Because you are operating under grace. Somebody say grace. <coughs> God is moving us in a grace. In a receiving grace. There is no way you can walk in receiving grace unless you do what? You are in a giving grace. How did they get to this grace? Apostle Royal, number verse 2. It says, verse 2, verse 2. That in great trial of affliction, somebody is asking, man of God, who is supposed to give? We can't give because we don't have money. We can't give because we have problems. We can't give because we are challenged. We can't, the best time to give is when you are down. The best time to give is when you don't have. Follow me. In great trial, not only trial, great trial of affliction, things were tough for them. They could have said, God understand. In a great trial, of affliction, the abundance, <coughs> excuse me, of that joy and that deep, not only poverty, deep. Because somebody's asking, no, me, it's not for me to give. It's for apostle. It's for Mamurut. It's not for me. No, in deep poverty, not only poverty, deep scarcity. What did they do? They abounded in the riches of that liberality. Standing of it. Pasa kataraba kam present worship kaya rabos eh kaya rabos andere rabos kaya raba ba 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 ba. Let's pray for the grace to forgiving grace. God, give me a grace to give towards your house. Not once. Ah, I can hear your prayer. I can hear your prayer. God, give me grace in this season. I shall give without complaining. I shall give without uh, six sitting back. I shall continually give. Are you praying? Are you praying like that? God, Rabagada, Rabagado. That Lord, give me the grace to give. Give me the grace to give towards your kingdom. Give me the grace. I don't hear you pray. I don't see you pray. Forget about your neighbor for the next few minutes. Forget about your, your neighbor for the next few minutes. Say, Oh Lord, give me a grace to give. The grace to participate in your kingdom. The grace to contribute. What not once. The grace to sacrifice. The grace to participate. Rebeke de Rebosha. Rabaka da Rabosha ke de Rebosha. Reke de Rebosha kata. Rebeke to riba sande ke de Lebraha. Grace, grace, grace to give. Grace, grace, grace to give. Grace, grace. Let your grace. I break every stinginess. I break every scarcity mentality. I break every poverty mentality. Lord, I avail myself. I want to pray that God, I avail myself to the giving, to the building of the house of the Lord. Make me a builder. Make me a builder. Make me a builder. Are you praying or you look at your neighbor? I don't see you pray. Lord, make me a builder. Hallelujah. Somebody lift up your hands. Yeah. Hallelujah. Wave your hands to the Lord. Let's see him wave your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Ta 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 
Raise us up, raise us up to be contributors. Raise us up to partner with you. Raise us up to be kingdom players. Let us be kingdom players, kingdom partners, kingdom contributors. Not just to sit back, oh Lord. Lord, with us, we will be able to raise because Lord, on our you on our side, we can do more. Lift up our hands up. There's a grace and anointing for healing. I don't know what's your pain. Galabaga da rabagadush. Get the rebo shande get the nebasha. Ya rabagado rabasaka talabra shande rebos. Makarabagado rebe get the rebo shande rebo seka talabra kayande. Rebagada, my sister, there's a glory of God. Lift up your hands, the glory of you. Yes. Lift up your hands, lift up your hands, lift up your hands. Yes, yes, behind my brother here. Yes, lift up your hands, lift up your hands. Yes, yes, there is something that is the glory. That's the glory for next level. That's the glory for next level. One, two, three, four, five. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Take it, take it. That's the anointing of God. 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 That's the anointing. Sickness is leaving this place. Every sickness is leaving this place. Hey. Sicknesses are leaving you. Every pain is going. Every pain is going. Somebody throw from the mountain. Your life will never be the same again. Throw from the mountain. These are changeable. Hold your hands, hold your hands. Lift up your hands in this atmosphere. Father, we stand together in agreement. Hey! There's a power moving. There's an angel of the Lord touching people behind me. Count of five. One, two, three, four, five. Receive it. Receive, receive, receive it. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Hey! Hey, I feel it. I see it sweeping through. I see it sweeping through. I see it sweeping through. Anointings for super job breakthrough. 
that you are breaking poverty, you are breaking everything. We just been take out an offering, take out an offering, Karabaha. Lord, we thank you for the angels. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for your process. That one, we don't give it on the offering. We just come and throw it here. As you are erecting an altar in the season, if the machine also understands that those that are having a machine, come, come and throw it here, Karasata. Come, come and give, 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 come, come and give, come and give. Ah, my brother.